time to start the second lecture. Uh, okay, second lecturer is uh, uh, Jason, Professor Jason Lee. Uh, he's in Kia's uh, School of Physics. Uh, he will be talking about the uh, stochastic thermodynamics. Okay, please welcome. Okay, uh, thank, thank you uh, for the introduction. So, uh, it's nice to meet you all uh, in this nice weather. So, uh, my lecture um, is about stochastic thermodynamics. And during the last past three decades, there has been tremendous advancement in stochastic thermodynamics. So, um, the goal of my lecture uh, is to cover from the basic to the, uh, to the important uh, cutting edge theories of uh, stochastic thermodynamics. But, uh, but the issues of my lecture is too wide, so probably I, uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure whether I can finish my, I mean, what I have prepared. So probably I will be running out of time in every lecture, but I don't care about that. So I will stop when time is over. So whenever, whenever you have any question, then uh, do not, please do not hesitate to ask me or interrupt me, okay? Okay, so uh, my lecture is about, as I said, uh, uh, stochastic thermodynamics. So, okay, so let me first start with the question, what is uh, thermodynamics? Okay, so thermodynamics is a branch of physics that deals with heat, work, and temperature, and energy and entropy, and their relation. So from their relation, we can understand uh, important phys physical properties of a system. Okay, so let me give you an example. So this is a uh, heat engine uh, we are well aware of. So in this example, uh, engine observes the heat, QH, from the heat bath with temperature TH. So this is a hotter temperature. So uh, by using this observed heat, it produces some work, W, and then remaining energy is dissipated as a uh, heat, QC, into the colder reservoir uh, with the temperature TC. Uh, so uh, this is the meaning of uh, heat, work, and temperature. Uh, here I emphasize some important words uh, with some boldic fonts. Okay, then what is the relation? So uh, there are several important relations. So the first important relation is the thermodynamic first law, which is nothing but energy conservation. Uh, so here, um, let's say that E is energy of the engine, then its change is given by observed heat, and dissipated heat minus uh, extracted work. Okay, that's simple, energy conservation. And the second relation uh, is so-called uh, thermodynamic second law, which state that the entropy production should be non-negative. Uh, in this example, entropy production is given by Clausius entropy form, which is uh, heat divided by temperature. Okay, so what we can know from this relation? Uh, by using this first law, uh, we can write QC in this way. And then now we plug this equation into this. And then arranging the terms. And then we finally get uh, uh, this result, this inequality. So, okay, let's look at the right-hand side. Right-hand side is uh, extracted heat divided by observed heat. So this term can be interpreted as a efficiency of an engine. Then this efficiency of engine is bounded by some quantity which, is, which depends only on the temperatures of the reservoirs. Uh, and this uh, quantity is called current efficiency and current efficiency does not depend on any details of the engine, right? It only depends on the temperatures. 
So uh, it, it is like some kind of uh, some universal bound. So from from these simple relations, we we now uh, understand that uh, we now know that any engine efficiency cannot be larger than this kernel bound. This is what we usually do in thermodynamics. Okay, so let me summarize in this way by using this schematic diagram. So there is a system we are interested in. So you can think of it as an engine in the previous example. And in the thermodynamic system, and we need environment. Uh, we, uh, we usually call this environment as a reservoir or a bed. So uh, there can be multiple reservoirs or uh, multiple baths, and each bath has its own temperature or its own chemical potential. So what is heat? Heat is, uh, heat is energy transfer between environment and system. And what is work? Work is energy transfer between system and external agent. So we have to distinguish this, uh, this concept. So um, intrinsically, so the thermodynamic system is not closed system, not closed system, but it should be open system intrinsically. OK? And this kind of relation, first law, second law, so from these relations in thermodynamics, uh, but the thermodynamic properties are uh, determined. So this is what we usually do in thermodynamics, okay? Okay, so up to now, we, uh, uh, I talked about the thermodynamics. Then the next question is then, what is stochastic? Okay, so in the previous example of a heat engine, uh, usually it has a macroscopic scale. So in such a macroscopic scale, motion is deterministic. However, uh, if we are interested in this very small system, mesoscopic or microscopic system, for example, Brownian particles or many biological systems such as a motor protein or some RNA folding, unfolding process, something like that, in such a small scale, the important thing is that in this scale, motion is not deterministic, but as we can see from this movie, this is a movie about a molecular motor, meiosis molecular motor. As you can see from this movie, the motion is not deterministic, but it shows a very random and stochastic motion. Okay, so what is the origin of this stochasticity? Okay, so uh, let me show you another movie. So, okay, let's say that we are interested in the we are interested in the motion of this yellow ball, Brownian particle. Then uh, we can uh, directly understand the origin of the stochasticity of this motion. Actually, it originates from the interaction between a system and environmental particles. So, uh, in principle, I mean, even though it seems like a stochastic motion, but in principle, the motion is deterministic if we know the old Hamiltonian of this system, right? However, in, in, in pra practically saying, it is infeasible to keep track of all the degrees of freedom of these reservoir particles because uh, there are, I mean, infinitely many number of uh, particles in the reservoir. So, to describe, to, to describe the motion of this kind of a Brownian particle system, then we need some phenomenological uh, description or equation of motion. So um, in, in my lecture, so I will talk about uh, two um, phenomenological descriptions. So the first one is Longevon equation, uh, which has a continuous space, continuous state. And the second one is a master equation, uh, which describes the Markov jump process, and it has a, a discrete state. OK. Clear?
Okay, so <clears throat> the stochastic thermodynamics, so is that thermodynamics for small stochastic system. So um, to do the thermodynamics, then what we have to do first is we have to first define heat and work. So in lecture one, I will talk about how to define heat and work in stochastic small system. And in this small system, we have to understand the concept of stochastic trajectory. So in lecture one, I will talk about what is stochastic trajectory and how to calculate uh, its path probability. Okay, then uh, in lecture two, uh, I will talk about, I'm going to talk about uh, what, I mean, the definition of entropy production and um, the, the fluctuation theorem. So fluctuation theorem is, uh, we can regard this fluctuation theorem as a generalized thermodynamic second law. And in the third and fourth lecture, I will talk about um, very important relations. Uh, the first one is thermodynamic uncertainty relation, and the second one is thermodynamic speed limit. So the, I mean, just before this lecture, of, uh, the Professor Joe organizer distributed uh, my lecture notes, so you can, I mean, you can see the files, okay? Okay, so in lecture one today, so I will talk about uh, two things. So the, the thermodynamics for Langevin dynamics and Markov jump process. Okay, so let me first uh, talk about the Langevin dynamics. Okay, here, let's suppose uh, there is a Brownian particle here. And it is immersed in uh, some, uh, some reservoir. Reservoir has uh, consists of many, many reservoir particles. And this reservoir has its own temperature T. So um, to describe, uh, the I mean, to make a, a phenomenological description of this motion, then we need uh, two, ing two ingredients, basically. So the first ingredient is dissipation. So it means that, let's suppose that the initial velocity of this Brownian particle is V0. V0, it is its initial velocity. And here, now, I mean, then after that, we do not apply any external force. Then the V0 will dissipate exponentially in time. So this is the meaning of dissipation. So this is what we usually observe in in, in this kind of system. So we can write this phenomenologically in this way. So this, I mean, explains the dissipation, exponential dis, uh, dissipation. Here, m is mass and gamma is dissipation coefficient. So we can, we know how to solve this equation. And this is the exact solution. So uh, it means that in the long time limit, uh, it tells us that V goes to zero. But is it really true in, in such a system? No, because there is, I mean, if we, if we observe the Brownian particle motion, actually, it continuously moves, right? So, I mean, it does not go to V equal to zero state. So it means that we need another ingredient, which is random noise. So we have to add some Gaussian, white Gaussian random noise. So the property of this uh, Gaussian noise is that its average value equal to zero. So, in, so uh, from, from this, if we take an average of this, then actually it becomes, I mean, this equation. So actually this equation of motion is correct in, the, uh, in terms of this average value, in the sense of this average value. And the second property is that the noise-noise auto time autocorrelation function is given by uh, this delta function with some noise strength B. 
So the delta function means that the noise, this random noise, is Markovian. It, it means that uh, for a different time, there is no correlation between the two noise. This is the meaning of uh, 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 Markovian noise. OK. So um, we, of course, we can solve this equation exactly. So this is a solution. Uh, you, can, you can do it by yourself after the lecture. Uh, so from this, we can calculate v square average and then if we take time goes to zero, uh, time goes to infinity limit, then this value approaches b over gamma m. OK, you, you can do it by yourself. But we know from the equipartition theorem, in, in equilibrium, the v square average is given by kbt over m, right? This is a well-known uh, relation. So from this relation, we can determine the B, the noise strength. So B is given by gamma KBT, KB, uh, KBT. So this relation is called uh, Einstein relation. So in such a way, we can set up uh, the Langevin equation, which describes the motion of this Brownian particle when it is immersed in a reservoir with temperature T. OK, so any question? No? OK. OK, so we basically set up the equation of motion, along the equation. So this term, uh, we can regard this, this force as a phenomenological force exerted by um, a heat bath. Now here, we apply some external force. So external force can have two, I mean, two, it can have two, I mean, force. So the first part, which is conservative force, and the second part is non-conservative force. So non-conservative force means that it cannot, it cannot be derived from the gradient of some potential. So here, um, potential U here, U has two components, so lambda and X. X is position, and lambda is time-dependent protocol. So for example, if we write the potential in this way, then it means that uh, the stiffness of this harmonic potential is time-dependent. So in such a way, we can uh, make time-dependent uh, potential. So, OK, by adding this external force to this equation of motion, then now it becomes um, uh, the uh, phenomenological description for this uh, Brownian particle when external force is involved. OK, so and, and this is some different uh, presentation of this one. So, uh, so this is a stochastic differential equation form. OK, so same, same thing, actually. OK, now we have, um, now we set up the stochastic differential equation for this stochastic system. Then, uh, to go further, uh, we, we need some knowledge on stochastic calculus. Uh, OK, so um, I, I'll talk about very I mean, uh, basic ones, so you don't worry about that. So, OK, now let's consider um, this regular function product. So it means that this is a position at current time t. And this, this is a um, function f evaluated at also current time t. And this product is uh, position is uh, current position at time t. But f function is evaluated at the next time. Next time, right? So different time. So the question is that these two product average are same. I mean, intuitively, we know that they are same. So I'll, I'll show it step by step. So um, because uh, this one uh, can be written in this way, so the next position is determined by the current 
uh, current position and current velocity. So because uh, this is a very small number, we can expand this function f in this way. And then uh, this product becomes this one, and this product becomes this one. And we know that because uh, this average is uh, order one quantity, so this whole term uh, is order dt. So if we take dt goes to zero limit, then we know that it vanishes. So in, in such a limit, uh, this product same, is same as this product average. Okay, this is a, I mean this is a I mean, well known result. Uh, and then now make it more I mean general way. So uh, this is a function at current time, and this is a function evaluated at the next time, and then we can choose in between, uh, one point in between them with a fraction a. So here a is in between 0 and 1. So by, by uh, uh, adding 1 minus a fraction in front of this uh, next position and a fraction a with this current position, then we can make this um, general I mean, um, product, f a function. Do, 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 do you got my point? Okay. Then now let's define this kind of a special product. So this special product is defined as f a time f a product and uh, with uh, x t. So by definition, by by using this definition, then we can write this one uh, one minus a fraction with uh, next position and a fraction in the current position. And but in, in this above line, we show that this one and this one are same. So this one and this one are same. So it is nothing but just the original one. So in this regular product, uh, or wherever we uh, pick the position, actually this uh, product uh, is same as uh, this original product. OK, this is a well-known well result. However, now let's um, consider this product. Here, it contains cosy noise. This cosy is a, this uh, random noise, and this is Gaussian white noise, and this is non-analytic function. So, in so when this kind of a non-analytic this cosy noise involved, then are they same? This is the next question. Okay, so let's first look at this first part. And because the random noise uh, is independent of the current value of V, so this average can be divided into two parts, V average and Cusy average. Because Cusy average is equal to zero, uh, is equal to zero, so actually this uh, is equal to zero. Then what, what about the second one? So, okay, to calculate this one, uh, uh, from, from this equation of motion, uh, we can change, uh, the, we can re-express vt plus dt by using other terms. So, uh, this is the result. And then the first term, actually, it, it is simply zero. And the second term also, it is multiplied by Cousin noise. So this, uh, there is a Cousy average here, so it is also zero. Only the thing is that the last term, it, it comes from the, this noise. But the thing is that uh, this noise-noise correlation function is a delta function, and here times are same. So actually, this term uh, does not vanish, but it makes order one value from, from, from the definition of this noise-noise uh, correlation. So it means that uh, this one and this one average is, are not the same uh, when such a uh, noise is involved. Uh, this is an important point in the stochastic uh, calculus. OK, then now we consider more general product. Uh, as I defined, this one can be written in this way. So 1 minus a factor with the next velocity 
and the a factor with current velocity and then this is simply zero and we know the, uh, the value of this one, this one. So it is simply becomes uh, this factor times 1 minus a. So now in this case, this general product depends on a. Okay, so this is all about you have to remember uh, in this uh, lecture, okay? So when, when non-analytic uh, Gaussian noise, white Gaussian noise is involved, then we have to be careful uh, when we make a product and average. Okay, uh, and then there are some special value of A. So it, when A equal to, is equal to one half, uh, it is, this case is called the Stratonovich product. So if I use this notation, this um, uh, open circle notation product, then it means that the, uh, the product should be uh, Stratonovich, A equal to one half. And when A equal one, then this product is called Ito product. So if I use the notation, uh, uh, the field circle, then it means that uh, the product is an uh, Ito product. Uh, so it, there are two frequently used uh, product in stochastic calculus. Okay, so any, any question here? Okay. I'm a bit confused about the last term. The, the, I'm, I'm, this one? No, no, no. The 2 gamma kVt over this n. This one? Yeah, yes. So, certainly you have small dt, but the delta function is also diverse. You, you, can, you can think it as a just a 1 over dt. That's all. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> it, it is not mathematical way, but physical way to understand the, the delta function. So, I mean, delta function is like, a, I mean, very small gap, uh, dt, and then the and, and integration over this whole range equal to one, it should be equal to one. So, the, uh, the height should be one, one over dt when we make it very, I mean, narrow and narrow and narrow. So, so in, in such a way, you can physically, intuitively understand yeah. this delta function. So, physically, that delta function is just a small having Gaussian width, something like that? Probably you can think it in that way, but what, what, I, what I mean, I, so, uh, yeah, you, you can think in that way. But intuitive way to understand the um, delta function and if, if we think it, the delta function in that way, then it, you can physically understand the meaning of this uh, noise. Okay, I mean, okay. this calculation. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any other question? Okay. Okay. Anyway. Um, uh, okay. So this is an important. I mean, result in the stochastic calculus. So I will use this uh, property. So okay. Um, from from this stochastic uh, differential equation, here I will I multiply v d t to both side of equation with uh, with the um, Stratonovich product here. Then, okay, let's look at first this one. So, uh, because of this Stratonovich product, then Vt should be calculated in this way. The middle point of this current and uh, next velocity value. And then, by calculating this, we have this relation. And we know that and mv square over 2, it, this is nothing but kinetic energy. So it means that uh, this value is same as the kinetic energy change. This is, this is why we have to use this Stratonovich product. If we use other, other I mean, stochastic 
product, then actually we cannot have this uh, kinetic energy change. Okay, and then uh, let's look at the next term. And this term, uh, because uh, even though there is a stochastic, I mean the stratum of its product here, but the left hand side, right hand side, there is no cosy noise here. So this product can be uh, changed into the just a normal product. And then this VDT can be written in this way, dx. And then uh, we know that the total derivative of u uh, can be written in this way by chain rule, partial derivative of x and partial derivative of lambda. So by using this, we can change uh, we can change into this total derivative and, and then deriva partial derivative of lambda. And then d lambda can be written in this way, lambda dot dt. Here, lambda dot is a time derivative of lambda. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm wonder, is it okay to, uh, uh, so here, uh, in, in the second line, of, of you integrate V using Ito scheme. Sorry, what, so, what? So, here? So, no. This one? So from the Langevin equation, here, mvt plus dt minus vt equals to something is Ito scheme. So you are using Ito calculus, right? Uh, so I, I don't get I don't get the so, point. So, um, so uh, there. So here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. here what? So uh, I think. You are using Ito calculus there, but, to, but when you define the uh, kinetic energy and something, you you are using Stratonovich scheme. Yes. So I am wonder is it okay to use both of both scheme? I know. No, I mean, uh, okay. So. Uh, this is a given uh, stochastic yes. differential equation. Here, yes. I multiply by Vt with some, some defined product. So I mean, we can, we can uh, multiply any, any, any uh, the stochastic calculus. We can use any stochastic product because it is just, uh, just a multiply by something. So we, we have to, I mean, yeah, I mean, we, 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 can, we can use any product here. Because, okay. So I, so I mean that, um, so, uh, so. <coughs> so I mean that, I, I think Vt plus dt minus Vt, this is from, Ito calculus. No, no. I mean, it, it, I mean, it is just uh, it just yes. denotes uh, the difference between the current and next next velocity. I mean, uh, I mean, this is a given given equation. So uh, this is a given equation, and here we multiply by some same number to both sides of equation. So that, that's all here. Not mix, not mix the the, uh, the stochastic product, but we just uh, uh, multiply. Okay. Uh, okay. Here, the the meaning of the meaning of this the meaning of this product is actually we multiply by just uh, this number to both sides of equation. That's all. Yes. Yeah. That's all. This is this is just a number. I mean, just a number. So the m number multiplication. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then, if you have a, a more question, then we can discuss it later. 
Okay, and okay, so by using this total derivative, so we can now write this term in that way. And the third term, uh, also the same as this first, I mean, the previous term. So even though it is a, 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 a stratum of the product, but because there is no, I mean, cosine no is uh, uh, here, so actually it, this stratum of the product can be converted into just a normal product. So um, if we move this uh, du to the left-hand side, then it becomes this one. So what it means? So uh, the kinetic energy change and potential energy change, so their sum gives a system energy change. So the left-hand side means the system energy change. And then this second term is work done by uh, external force. So, I mean, so it can be interpreted as work. So work can be divided into two parts, here and there. So the first part is work done by conservative force. And this work done by conservative force is usually called Jarzinski work. And the second part is work done by non-conservative force. And their sum gives a total work. And the final term is actually, this is a heat bath force. So the meaning of this term is that work done by heat bath force. This is the, so we can identify this term as heat. So heat is worked on by heat bath. I mean, this is a heat bath force is a phenomenological force, of course. And the important thing is that when we evaluate heat, we have to use Stratonovich product. So this is delta E equal to W plus Q. So this is a thermodynamic first law in Langevin system, under the Langevin system. So um, this is work and this is heat. So the important thing is that uh, we have to use a Stratonovich. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, intuitive uh, explanation why we must use Stratonovich convention for heat? Intuitive. Um, intuitive. <laughs> I mean, intuitively, um, I don't. I have not thought in that way, but but uh, what I know is that I mean to to make a thermodynamic first law, I mean what you have to do is that we we have to make a kinetic energy term here. So to make a kinetic energy, we have to use uh, the Stratonovich here. So th that's why we need uh, here a Stratonovich product. But um, uh, I have. Uh, I have not thought in that way, so, okay. Thank you. Uh, in, the sec uh, in the third red underline. And this one? No, the, this one? yeah. Okay. You said that the Stratonovich product is same with the regular product. Okay. But I think VT is also a uh, random variable because it contains noise, but uh, why those two can be same? Okay, so if, if it is T plus, uh, sorry, if, if it is a, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, sorry, so, okay, so there is uh, some assumption here. So, so it does not have a uh, velocity dependence. So in, in such a case, we can write in that so if, if it has a velocity dependence, then actually it should be uh, Stratonovich. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, don't, no more question? Okay, so uh, this is the first law. Uh, oh, okay, oh, sorry. So if it's 
So if we started with the Ito calculus, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't recover the first law of thermodynamics. Pa sorry, what is that last? So mm -hmm. you finally recovered the first law of thermodynamics from this mm -hmm. by following the Stratonovic calculus. Mm -hmm. But if we started with the Ito calculus, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't recover this kind of thing. Yes, I mean, first law of thermodynamics is still hold intuitively, I guess. Uh, so, so you mean so by the ito, ito, ito calculus is that if we multiply Vt as an ito, ito product, you mean? No, I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, we, but, but if, we, if, we, if we use an ito, ito product here, actually, it, it, is a, it is becomes a just a normal product. So in, in such a case, we, we don't derive this kinetic energy difference. Yeah, but um, there would be some other consequence from other terms, and we, we should still recover the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, Means... So how? how because it is, it is actually holds in every case, I think, I guess. I mean, Ito calculus, in the case of Ito calculus, it should also hold. Means Yes, of course, it holds. I mean, the, uh, the, the reason why I use uh, uh, here uh, the stoke I mean the, the stratum of which product is that to derive the thermodynamic first law. Yes, that's my question. So if we follow the way of Ito calculus, mm -hmm. then shouldn't we recover the first law of thermodynamics? Uh, so what do you because mean by it is the underlying law, I think. So it should still hold in that case also. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean... So it is just two different procedures, but intuitively that should hold for both of these calculus, or am I wrong? I, I mean, the, I mean, this, I mean, we, we can use any, any calculus, but the thing is that what we want to derive, that's the old thing I use this here, Stuk, I mean, the Stratonovich. But if, we, if, you, if we, you can derive some, some properties by using uh, Ito calculus, then you can, you can use it. I mean, so, so actually, actually the, uh, it depends on the convenience. I mean, convenience to derive something. OK. About so it's more convenient mm -hmm. way of doing this, to recover this first law of thermodynamics. So this calculus. Yes, so, so to derive the, the thermodynamic first, so, and to define the, what is heat and what is work, then actually, I mean, uh, I, I don't know there is another way to show the thermodynamic first law. OK. OK. Thank you. OK. Okay, and then now let's um, consider uh, some over dental limit. So over dental limit is that m over gamma goes to zero limit. So in such a limit, um, the velocity relaxation time is too short compared to the dynamics of the position. So in such a case, we can neglect this inertia term. So if we neglect this inertia term, then this equation becomes this one. So uh, this equation is called underdent Langevin equation, and this uh, equation is called overdent Langevin equation. So overdent Langevin is uh, equation uh, we use uh, for um, general, I mean, usual uh, biological system where the uh, velocity relaxation time is very, very short, probably picosecond, something like that. So um, now, by moving this term to the left-hand side, then we can now write, in this way, the stochastic differential equation for uh, overdent Langevin uh, equation. So here, let's check uh, the stochastic product for this overdent Langevin system. So in the underdent Langevin system, I showed you uh, this product depends on A. Then wh what about the overdent Langevin equation? Because in the overdent Langevin equation, now there is no velocity vari variable because the velocity variable is integrated out. Uh, we, we do not care about the velocity variable in the overdent Langevin system. So uh, we, we do not have this kind of uh, uh, the product. 
but we have to check whether um, this um, product gives a what value. So, uh, by definition, this product can be written in this way. So, 1 minus a fraction with a next position and a fraction with current position. And then we can easily see that this average value divided into separate average, x average and qz average. So, this term vanishes and only this term remains. And from this equation of motion, this x t plus dt contains this uh, qz noise. So, because it contains qz noise, there is a qz qz correlation function here. So, it is not zero, but it become it makes order one quantity, as we as we saw in the example of a under damped Langevin system. So, the difference is only that. Uh, the, in over dental Langevin limit, then this uh, product uh, gives, oh, oh, okay, so this product uh, gives uh, this A dependent vector. Okay. Okay, so let's now um, make a thermodynamic first law uh, in this over dental Langevin system. So here, uh, let's do the same thing. So uh, for both, uh, here we multiply x dot to both sides of equation uh, with Stratonovich product. Then, okay, now let's look at this part first. And this x dot dt uh, can be written in this way, dx, and this product is it, uh, Stratonovich product. And here, um, there is a one important thing to understand this, um, this term. Okay, so let's consider now the expansion of this uh, function. So this is evaluated, uh, potential evaluated at the next time. So this lambda, t plus dt, can be written in this way and x t plus dt can be written in this way. And then now we want to expand this u function. So uh, this is a leading order. And this is a, a first uh, correction term, a uh, partial derivative of lambda, partial derivative of x. So in usual, in usual case, actually, we don't care about the uh, next order, right? We usually keep up to this order in, in usually. But however, in, in this uh, over to Langevin system, when we expand this function, we have to keep up to this order. Because you see that there is a dx squared here. And dx squared contains uh, this vector. And as I, as I mentioned, that you can think this vector is 1 over dt. So this whole term gives order dt correction. And this order dt correction is same as the order of this one. So that's why we have to keep up to this order. So this can be uh, written uh, in this way by, uh, bound, uh, by bounding this common factor dx in this way. And this term is actually, uh, so this term can be written in this way by using the notation of a Stratonovich product. So the, the thing is that, so when we expand some function with respect to x in the over to Langevin system, then the, it should be Stratonovich. It means that, so uh, uh, the, this is a total derivative of u, some function, then and by using the chain rule, this is a partial derivative of lambda, and this is a partial derivative of x, but here it should be uh, Stratonovich because of this reason, re reason. Okay, this is a second thing we have to uh, memorize. Uh, okay, so from, from this equation, so uh, this term, can be rewritten in terms of uh, du plus uh, this term. 
Okay, so, so this term can be changed into this one, and this d lambda can be rewritten in this way, lambda dot dt. Okay, fine. Good question here. Okay. And then, now let's move this term to the left-hand side, and then move this term to the right-hand side. Then if we arrange the terms, then we get this equation. And then, in Oberdental Langevin system, because in Oberdental Langevin system there is no velocity, so there is no kinetic energy. So the system energy is uh, system energy corresponds to the just the potential energy in Oberdental Langevin system. So this du uh, equals to energy change now. And then this second term, this is almost same as the previous under dental Langevin case. So this is a work. So of course, this can be divided into two parts. So uh, in, in, in this case, the, this is a work done by conservative force or uh, Jasinski work. So the same definition as we saw in the under dental Langevin system. And this is a non-conservative uh, work done by non-conservative force. So if if this non-conservative force have x dependence, then it should be Stratonovich. And so their sum uh, becomes uh, the total work. Finally, so the final term can be identified as a heat. So this same same definition as we saw in the under dental Langevin dynamics. So uh, to define heat, we have to use this Stratonovich product. Okay, so this is a thermodynamic first law uh, for over them to Langevin uh, dynamics. So, is there any more question up to this point? No, then I will. Okay, then let me give you some example how to calculate in the real um, example. So, this is an example of optical tweezers experiment in overdamped system. So there is a particle, brownian particle here, and then we apply a laser. So this is optical tweezers, and the center of this optical tweezer uh, is denoted by lambda t, and lambda t moves linear in time. So a is some constant velocity. So because these optical tweezers uh, provide this harmonic potential, so this is uh, uh, the, the motion of the Brownian particle. OK, here, then how to calculate work? So uh, this is a definition of uh, work done by conservative force, or Jasinski work. So by, by using this uh, ha uh, harmonic potential, so we can directly calculate uh, the work uh, in this way. But in this, uh, in this example, because there is no non-conservative force, so the work done by non-conservative force is zero. Uh, and then the total work uh, from time zero to tau, uh, then, we, then if we integrate from integrate uh, time from 0 to tau, then we can have uh, the total work uh, by the, the Jasinski work. And in simulation or experiment, uh, we have to use this summation notation for uh, this discrete time. So in such a way, we can uh, evaluate um, work. Okay. Uh, how can you integrate non-conservative force? Non-conservative force. Okay, so I will I mean, I will show you in the next example. Oh, okay. okay, thank you for your question. Okay, so no more question. And then the this is the heat. So, uh, so uh, this is definition of heat. So, uh, from from this equation of motion, we can uh, replace this term by using this external force here. Okay. So um, 
this uh, product applies to first term this one and the second term this term and then okay now let's look at this term because uh, we have to consider I mean this uh, stratum of its product so this term should be 1 over 2 and x next time position plus current time position so this term gives this factor and the second term actually because lambda lambda does not have any cosy noise so I mean I mean it does not have it does not have x dependence so I mean this uh, uh, stratum of its product can be uh, changed to just a normal product so in such a way you can calculate the heat uh, so in, in such a way we can evaluate heat in experiments or uh, simulation okay and then okay is Sir? Um, so, for example, y your question is that if we write dx circle xt is the same as the first one, yeah, yeah, in, in such a case, yes. Okay. Okay, now let's turn to the next uh, example. So it is about the two-dimensional Brownian gyrator in overdent Langevin system. So it is a two-dimensional system. Uh, so this, uh, this part, this part is conservative part, conservative force, harmonic potential. And this part, it, this is a rotational force. I mean, rotational force cannot be derived from the uh, potential, so it is a non conservative force. So, how can you calculate uh, work here? So, in, in this case, because there is no um, protocol, time dependent protocol in this conservative force, so this Jarzinski work becomes zero. But uh, non conservative works uh, uh, does not vanish. So. So because there are two, two directions, x direction and y direction, so we have to calculate uh, separately. So for x direction work, non-conservative work can be, uh, by definition, can be written in this way. So this is a non-conservative force and times uh, dt in a Stratonovich product. And for y direction, this is a non-conservative force, so times dy, Stratonovich. But in this example, uh, because y, I mean y has this cosy y noise and x has cosy x noise, but this cosy x and cosy y are actually they are independent. <coughs> so in, in this example, uh, fortunately, uh, this stratum of uh, product can be converted into just a normal product. But in usually, usually uh, we have to consider this um, stratum of each product. Okay, then, okay, we can also calculate, evaluate heat in x direction and in y direction we can also calculate the heat. Okay, so uh, you, can, you can read it again in my, in my lecture notes. Okay, so... Um, Ah, in experiment. Um, that's a good question. Um, uh, I don't know whether there is a, some general thumb rule to uh, generate this non-conservative force. Uh, so, for example, uh, this type of force is actually the rotational force. Then the, the, ne then the question is changed like how can you make a rotational force? So, in some uh, experiment, well, probably you you read the article. So, I mean, um, there is a, a ATP synthesis motor. So, probably they they put some bead, and then by using some laser, they can uh, provide some rotational force. Uh, in, in that uh, biological system, but uh, I, I don't know how to make uh, the, this kind of a non-conservative force in, in general way. Uh, 
but in specific way we can make make a, such a force. For example, um, by using uh, virtual virtual potential um, virtual potential uh, method, which uh, makes a uh, uh, which can make an arbitrary force by using optical tweezer. So there is a, some kind of a method, experimental method. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Uh, you say that the uh, iter calculus and struggle with calculus, but in this lecture, are we using strong pitch calculus? Uh, I think. Then, then when we using iter calculus? Oh, yes, I will. I mean, okay. In the next section, I will talk about um, how to calculate the path of probability. Uh, so when I use uh, the path of probability, then in some case it, uh, it is convenient to use Ito calculus, but in some case it is convenient to use a Stratonovich calculus. So and so in the in the next example, then I will show that how to use Ito calculus. But we, you can you can choose uh, for your convenience. Uh, just. Then um, there is not there is same same value of just calculus by my preference. Just doing so, my preference. Mm -hmm. So you you can uh -huh. you can you can choose you can choose the calculus. But when we define the heat or um, work, then so when we define heat, we have to use Stratonovich. But if you calculate something, then you can choose uh, whatever you want for your convenience. I got it. Thank you. Uh, my, my, my Is there any explanations about uh, why Stanovich calculations were plausible in physical systems? Mm. More, I mean, but <laughs> um, to, I mean, to uh, make a consistent theory, what we have already know. So uh, we have, I mean, we have to use a Stratonovich to, to make a consistent theory to the previous, uh, the, our knowledge. So, uh, but as, as somebody also asked that why Stratonovich is, in, how, how can we uh, understand intuitively the Stratonovich product? But Mm, physically, I don't know about it. Yeah, I mean, but mathematically, we have to use that because we have to derive the thermodynamic second law, and from the thermodynamic first law, and from the thermodynamic first law, we can define work and heat in, in a consistent way. But if you want to make uh, other other thermodynamics, then probably you can do it. But uh, in, 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 in the stochastic thermodynamics, we, we consistently make uh, this definition. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to talk about, in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to talk about stochastic trajectory. Uh, so, um, Okay, so here I will only focus on the over damped Langevin system equation, not under damped Langevin equation, but essentially same. So let's look at this uh, equation of motion. And here I will change a variable in this way. So dw, I will define dw as a cosy dt. And this actually, w is called the Wiener process. But anyway, you don't care about this. 
Uh, so this average value of dw equal to zero, and the correlation function of dw becomes uh, zero and this one. Uh, you, can, you can check it from this correlation function. Okay, so this is nothing but uh, rewriting of the previous equation of motion. Okay, then here I will consider uh, some one single trajectory. So here I discretize time uh, in this way. Uh, here, of course, dt is infinitesimally small time. So uh, the final time is tau, and the initial time is zero. So uh, uh, from this discretization, uh, we can also discretize a position. So this is the initial position, and the next time position, and next to next time position, and something like that. So uh, this is the final position, and I will call this whole uh, trajectory as gamma. So what I want to calculate is that probability for observing one, one segment, for observing this one segment transition. So how to calculate it? So before, before estimating this probability, let, let us first look at the meaning of Gaussian random variable. So let's say that z is a Gaussian random variable, then the probability for observing this uh, z is simply given by this Gaussian distribution. This is the meaning of Gaussian random variable, right? So, because dw, dw is actually Gaussian white noise, it means that dw is also Gaussian random variable. So the probability for observing single dw is same, simply given by this uh, same, same Gaussian distribution. Simple, right? So here, um, the sigma a variance, variance is, we can know what is variance here. So from this, we know the variance given by 2 gamma kbt dt. And so from this Gaussian distribution, now we know what is dw. So dw is given by this term minus this one. So let's plug this equation in, instead of this dw. Then it becomes this one. And I also substitute a sigma by using this quantity here and there. And of course, this dw square is just a normal product. So this square should be e to product here. Okay, question here? Okay, so um, finally, uh, uh, so I change the uh, integration variable from dw to the position by using this equation of motion. So we can write in this way. So this is a probability for observing uh, uh, one, one segment transition. And, uh, and then uh, I can rewrite this difference into x dot dt here. So finally, we get this result. So um, this is a, a probability for observing one segment transition. So this is called onsago matula function. And then now, let's calculate the probability for observing this whole trajectory. Then the whole trajectory, but each segment, each segment is determined by each dw, right? So each is different segment determined by different dw, and this dw is independent each other. So it means that the whole path probability is given by the multiplicate product of each segment probability because they are independent. Each dw uh, variable is independent variable, random variable. So. 
so now for, by using this equation then we can now write uh, by using this equation we can write in this way So uh, the, now the whole probability for uh, actually this is a conditional probability, which means that the probability uh, of the trajectory gamma given that the initial state is x zero. So to calculate the whole probability for observing gamma, we have to multiply the initial uh, initial probability. So we have to multiply initial distribution here. So this is a whole probability for observing total uh, one single trajectory in the over system. Okay. Can you just discuss the progress? Uh. Uh, DX, DX, DX. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. This one? This one? Yeah, second one. Dx, dt. Dx, dt. This one? Yeah, this one. Uh, what is this? x of t equals dt minus x2 or x of t equals 2 dt minus this? Uh, can you just expand dx? Uh, this, I mean, this is just uh, actually integral variable. Um, uh, uh, this is nothing but uh, here, I mean, this is a path integral. Now it becomes a path integral formalism. So you can think it as a just a, uh, you don't need to, I mean, um, expand it, but it is a just a, uh, the, the integral variable. Oh, yeah. And you can all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Path integral, I mean. The but even shouldn't it be at time p, you should take all that. Uh, okay, so. Uh, when I okay here, uh, actually um, this is a uh, this is a nothing but the integration variable, right? So here I just change uh, from from dw to dx t and plus dt. So I, actually this is a nothing but just the integral variable. Okay, from, from this one. So uh, this, this term is determined from this one. Actually, this one and this one are constant it, in, in this situation. They are linearly, I mean, linearly uh, related. And this term in this term is constant at this point, and this term is determined by this random noise. Okay, so this is a uh, probability. Uh, and here, let me make a one note. So uh, as, as, you, um, uh, as you asked me, so I mean, here I use the Ito, Ito uh, product, but we can exchange this Ito product to other general product uh, in, in this way. So let me, let me show you. So this, uh, this square means that the first term square this one, and the second term square this one, and this cross product becomes this one. Here we have to use this uh, general product here, A product. And then, what is it? So by definition, this is the next position with 1 minus A, current position, current time with fraction a and x dot. So by um, expanding this, uh, we, can, we can show uh, it becomes this equation. So uh, by multiplying this one and this one, this is the first term, this is the second term, and here uh, there is a x dot square dt term here. So because x dot square contains quasi 
because you know it's square so it also gives the order one quantity so this term becomes uh, this one okay so uh, by by using this uh, we now substitute to this equation and then we have this equation so this is the first term this is the second term and then now we make these three terms into uh, into uh, this square square term so of course this is uh, this square term is an eto product so it means that this uh, eto product can be expressed uh, with uh, this expressed by this general product plus something else okay so there, there is a relation so by using this relation we can change this eta product into this way okay so um, this is a um, so this is a summary I have talked about so here in the lecture one I talked about how to define work and uh, how can we um, how we uh, evaluate uh, the path of probability for over the Langevin system and uh, even though I do not talk, talk about uh, how to evaluate the path of probability for under the Langevin system but it is essentially same but there is a one, one difference here because uh, this is a delta function means that there is a one constraint a constraint means that x dot equal to v uh, this is a uh, under the Langevin equation so that's why we have to put this delta function here but other things are almost I mean essentially same for the uh, uh, over dental Langevin case okay so uh, my, my plan was I mean I also I plan to talk about uh, then the thermodynamics thermodynamics for Markov jump process in lecture one but it is already time is over so I think uh, it's right time to uh, wrap up my lecture today okay Take a question? No? Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Speaker. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Uh, are the limits exactly perfectly damped? Do they coincide? These two limits? So, so, sorry again. Limits exactly uh, perfectly damped? Do the two uh, formulations uh, coincide? So what, what, what formulation? You, uh, no, the under damped and the over damped. If it's exactly perfectly damped, yes. Do you get a? Do, do they coincide the two forms? So coincide means that when m goes to zero limit, it approaches to this value. It. Yeah, I mean because in the boundary right between over damped and under damped, there is perfectly damped. Um. Uh, so I mean to evaluate uh, uh, from 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 the under damped dynamics to over damped dynamics, we first first we have to um, integrate our velocity variable uh, because uh, uh, it is relaxes too fast. So um, so your question is like if we. Um, integrate over all the velocity variable then it uh, it approaches to this uh, over them to pass the probability probably so that that's what I'm wondering is uh, does it go smoothly across or is there some limit because for the exactly perfectly damped then M and gamma have to be related right uh, I, I, I didn't I didn't do it. Uh, no, I know, I know you, you didn't yeah, talk yeah, about I, it, right? I, I, I'm just saying it's a natural kind of question, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I derived uh, this each path of probability for each um, equation of motion, but I, I have not tried to uh, this, uh, integrate out this velocity variable first and then whether this remaining term uh, is same as this path of probability for under the case but um, but anyway we we 
so for going from this to this, we have some some limit that mm -hmm. m m over gamma goes to zero limit. So probably I think uh, if we take such a limit and then if we first integrate our velocity variable, then I think uh, probably it goes to this best probability. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you. Uh, in the summary slide, uh, you wrote heat for the overdam dynamics x dot for dq heat, but in the underdam dy dynamics case, you wrote v. Yes. So I wonder, x dot and v are are rigorously strictly different for these overdam and underdam. Okay. So uh, okay. So in underdam Langevin dynamics, actually, there is a velocity variable. However, in overdamped Langevang dynamics, there is no velocity variable right? because a velocity variable is integrated out. So we have to express it only in terms of x variable, not v variable. So that's why we use here x dot. I understood. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think uh, today we should uh, close this uh, whole discussion. Okay, so dinner is uh, already in the same place, I mean, cafeteria, fourth floor, and then if you are staying in the hotel, uh, you can take a bus, I mean, there will be a bus uh, six, at 6.30, okay? So you can uh, take that bus and go back to your hotel. Okay, and then that's it, okay, see you tomorrow, same, uh, 9.30, okay? Okay, see you.